Welcome to the Julie Lawton Living Podcast, the place to get advice, tips, and tricks to building the life and luxury home of your dreams with 30-year business owner, designer, and builder, Julie Lawton. It all starts with a good plan. This is Julie Lawton Living. Welcome back to another episode of Julie Lawton podcast. I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you for joining me and I hope you're enjoying all my tips, all my advice. I like to give the truth, man, because this business is tough and and you got to know what you're getting into. If you're thinking about remodeling or building a home ground up, I've been doing this 40 years. I'm old, just kidding, but I'm experienced and uh, I find that people like my direct honesty and I'm, you know, and I provide that one-stop shop. So there's literally nothing I don't know about this business. So for more information about that, if you want a snapshot of what it's going to be like, check out the seven simple steps on my website. It explains everything you're going to go through from conception to completion. So my background is uh, engineering, mechanical engineering, architecture, then interior design, and then decorating. So I truly am a one-stop shop, but I start with the core of the business, and I like complicated projects. I get kind of bored if I'm just going to do a remodel and paint the kitchen white. That's And it really doesn't interest me to decorate the living room and pick out a sofa and, 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 and pillows. I'm serious. So um, I like extreme. So my most extreme project I ever did was in Newport beach. And I was the first woman to, well, I was the first contractor to come up with a, what you call a waterproof foundation, 30 foot caissons into the uh, ocean, going through the ocean floor of water. I shouldn't say the ocean floor, but going through all the ocean because the ocean goes down like seven feet and then going down through the Santa Ana river on the peninsula. So the point is I like extreme. So I was told by the city of Newport, I was the first contractor to come up with a waterproof foundation because I use chemically treated concrete. So anyway, that probably means nothing to anyone, but I I was the first one in the history of Newport to come up with it. So there. So um, I like complicated and extreme remodeling usually means doing something no one else can figure out, even though it seems obvious to me, but it's just involves going, thinking out of the box, like what can we do? And think of it as a big picture because the house is like a you know, like a puzzle in a way. And and if it's built out of wood, the house moves, right? So I have a house now that's falling down the hill, of course, but it's not really literally falling, but it's leaning and the floors are tilted seven inches down. So it's failing and degrading and blah, blah, blah. But nobody else can figure out what to do. So $250,000 later with uh, temporary shoring, we've now jacked it back up to perfectly level, which you can do with wood homes. Didn't do anything to the house. It just leveled it out. But it's um, now we've solved their problem and their house is level and stable and for good for another hundred years so or more. So um but complicated usually means heavy duty structural and just thinking out of the box and it doesn't have to cost millions of dollars. It just has to be well thought out with the structural engineer and the soils engineer. So I specialize in that because, but you know, I mean, not to go down this road because just, be, but I'm a girl and uh, I'm a contractor and no one gets that, you know, they think, Oh, what does she do? And then, then that, you know, you get, I get that all, my whole life just because I'm a woman, but I do, specialize in complicated because I'm into the architecture and the structural engineering. So on that note, if you have a complicated project, let me know because the last one I did, it took eight contractors before they got to me and I figured it out. So anyway, that's my specialty. (laughs) So being a one-stop shop, I'm serious. No one does this. And this is what happens on with one-stop shops. Um, because, well, I'm the only one who does it. So this is what I do. So as a one-stop shop, I truly take the project from conception to completion because I provide the architectural plans. I provide the interior plans with for what's screwed and glued to the walls and the decorating. Then I provide the landscape. And I have a landscape architect that stamps my plans. And But I do the design. And um And then I have another woman that comes in and helps with minute details, like, you know, putting flowers in the pots and all the beautiful stuff. 
So I don't get that deep into the landscape, but I do the overall. So, and then, uh, and then I submit it to the city. I work with the planners, but before that, my plans get done and the conception and the concept and the direction and design goes right to the engineers. There's five engineers to build a custom home. You got to have the survey, the soils, the structural, the civil, and the title 24. I pay those five engineers to provide the plans because it's impossible to me to imagine that I would let my client manage anything because they're not the expert and they don't know what's going on. And why would I put my client to work? But no one else does that. Every other architect, designer, contractor says, you need this plan. You need that plan. You need this. You need them. So you, before you know it, you're hiring seven to 11 people. And why the, you know, what I, what I don't do that because clients aren't meant to work on the team. They are the client. So I am the only one that manage this, manages this and doesn't put you through the torture of trying to manage a seven to 11 people. It's insane. It's stupid. So, I mean, I hate to be so blunt, but I manage the every human that's part of the team. So think of it like this. I'm the coach of the team and I'm the, you know, the general in the army. You know, it's like the, it's, there's a pyramid of, you know, and if you only if you have one person in charge who's actually the professional, as opposed to the other people who are not the professional, or seven people thinking they're in charge, it becomes a shit show. I don't do shit shows. I do professional one stop shop where I take all the pressure. I manage every aspect. I come in on time and I come in on budget. And there are no mistakes because if you follow the process and you do everything in order as you should, it goes smoothly. Go figure. I yet to know anybody else that has a project that goes smoothly because <clears throat> the players fight. No one's managing the players. The players don't know each other. The players, you know, have attitude. The players drop the ball because they're in everything from incompetence to personal life problems. I mean, you take that whole thing, <clears throat> no one's managing it. Good luck. <clears throat> but I pride myself in providing a one-stop shop. And you, if you talk to my clients, I take the, there's, there's no finger pointing with me because it's just me. I manage it. I can't blame anyone, period. So that's the secret to my success with my clients. Cause I do this because it's a, it benefits the client, you know, so <clears throat> can't stress that enough, but too bad not more people don't do this, but the client's not supposed to be on the team and do the work. The client's supposed to be the client and uh, be serviced. And um, their only job is put their just just put out their dreams. You know, tell us their dreams. That's about it. And makes make decisions on what they want and what they don't want because it's their house. Most people design for them. You know, a lot of designers only know how to design one style because it's because they're not competent about actual des what is design, <clears throat> but. Um, if the design is truly custom, it's truly custom to the environment and how that client wants to live. So there's my speech on <laughs> what to do and what not to do and why I am a, truly a one-stop shop. So being the one-stop shop, I've gotten some great clients who really appreciate that. And most of my clients, just you know, are very successful in business, they figured it out. They know who they are. They know what they can do. They know what they can't do. And meaning they turn the power over to me and they trust the professional. I don't work with micromanagers. I don't work with people who are delusional thinking that they know more than I do because it turns into a, a, a nasty game, a battle of egos and a battle of nonsense. So I just, Anyway, so I have a lot of wonderful clients over the years who have hired me to do extreme remodels. And the reason they hire me is because, again, they're busy and um, it's, it's worked out great. And a lot of my clients want to be involved in high detail, meaning they want to know, of course, what's going on every day. So I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but with my clients because I truly am the one-stop shop and they're traveling or sitting at home or doing whatever they're doing. They get daily updates, weekly updates, photographs every single day, just so you know. So 
they're a hundred percent informed because that calms them down and lets them see we're actually doing it. But so one of my best clients and my most fun projects, I'd actually had two of these on the peninsula where the, these are clients bought old homes as second homes. One of them was actually the permanent home eventually, but they, one of them was on a really tight budget. The other one was on an okay budget. But what we did on both cases is save the second story. So who does that? Most contractors would say, oh, no, forget it. No, I'm not doing that. No, rip it. You got to rip it down. Now you got to start over. It's too much work. And um, so what I did in both cases is I took out the, the first floor completely. But before I did that, I put in temporary walls, like seven of them, you know, like every three feet across the back of the house, which held up the second story of the garage. So we're basically holding up a 20 by 20 foot room with five to seven temporary walls. And then you take out all the footings around the house. First you take out the slab in the front and then you take out all the footings and the house is just sitting on these temporary walls in the middle of the back of the, of the lot. And then you, um, and then what you do is you pour the footings in and reattach the walls. So then you can take out the temporary walls and then you pour, take out all the rest of the concrete and pour new concrete on the whole slab and tie it all together. So before you know it, you have a new foundation and a new slab to, of, to support the base of the home. But at the whole time I did this, I saved the second story. It was so cool. The neighbors freaked out because the house is like levitating. And I have a little video on YouTube and uh, um, Instagram that shows this. But I thought it was fun. And um and but no one else would do that. They make the client tear it down and cost them another half a million dollars or whatever it was to, to build the second story. But it made the homes mean it helped the homes help the budget, but it saved the charm. The one house I saved was a vintage style cottage. It was just beautiful. So again, I like doing it stream. I like helping my clients achieve their goals, whether it's budget or look or whatever it is. That's what it's about, you know. So the other extreme project I have, I talked about it earlier about it was literally falling down the hill, but it wasn't slipping down the hill, but the house was, you know, die, taking a dive because the wood framing had started to have dry rot and termite damage, but mostly because the wood was getting wet and just actually sinking like a sponge, you know, a sp just drying up and sinking. So anyway, the project I'm talking about was a former Chris Abel house, and I call it like a soccer ball design because it was all triangles in the living room, but it's basically a square box, and then the part that cantilevers over the hillside because the hillside is like this, and the house is up here cantilevering over it. It's, it has a triangle shape, and um, <clears throat> to get that thing supported, I had to build what would what looks like an oil rig platform in the ocean, so you got nine nine post holding up a platform about 18 inches below the house. So I could just put some short little um, six by, you know, eight by to hold up the entire structure while I pulled out 30 foot beams and replaced them with a crane. So um, it's pretty dramatic, but God, it was easy after all, once I got the platform built, cause it's like an oil rig, you know, platform. So the men could, are safe there's a railing on it and they just work up there and the whole house weight is supported by that platform. Nine caissons with concrete caissons, nine posts with count 12 foot deep caissons. And these are temporary. So anyway, um, pretty fabulous. I'm very proud of our team for accomplishing this because the client didn't have anyone to help them. They went through eight contractors before they got to me and, um, and I'm just really proud of it. I can't brag enough about the, cause now they have this magical transportation. It seems magical cause no one else could think of it. And, um, but the thing is the home is now preserved forever. It's like amazing. And it's, it's a, it's a piece of art. The home is a piece of art. So I'm glad we were able to save it. So if you're interested in do, having something done and you can't find anybody to do it, of course, call me. But if you're getting into something that's extreme, you got to remember you have to have the right team with the vision. The architect's got to have the vision. The structural engineer's got to have the vision. They got to work together. The soils guy's got to be present because he provides the facts to even allow the structural to work. So you got to realize who that little team is. 
And if the person you're hiring doesn't have that team, don't even go there. Because <clears throat> if you make a mistake on this, you're, well, it's bad. So the point is, st- com- complicated remodels require a very good, tight team that knows each other. That's my best advice. But if you want in- more information, check out my website or give me a call. I'm always available to discuss projects. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Julie Lawton Living. For more information or to connect with Julie one-on-one, visit julielawtonliving.com. And don't forget, it all starts with a good plan.